Pour something flammable into your glass. It's Jaded GamerCast. My name is Lang. With me, as always, is Nathan. With us once again is frequent guest host, Maddie. Matt, welcome back. Uh, I heard it was a Space Marine episode, so I had to show up for it. <laughs> yes, that's right. It is indeed a Space Marine episode. Um, and uh, for all of you who voted on the poll on the Facebook page, thank you. Uh, we are going to take the three top worst Space Marine Legions. Each of us will be defending one of them. And the goal will be to convince you which is the absolute worst, which will result in yet another poll where we will <laughs> once and for all decide which is the absolute worst. So I will lay the ground rules for this debate. That's it. All right. So... Oh, I, I was expecting <laughs> I, ground rules at yeah, that I, point. I thought, no, there thought, will be five I we were, questions. I, be doing I thought you were going to go on like a diatribe there for a second about what we're actually doing here instead of just winging it. But no, sure, no, no. There, see, here's the thing. With the two of you specifically, I find <laughs> that the more I try to build structure, the more you break it down. So um, like when I posted the poll and I said, pick the one Legion you think is the worst, <laughs> Nathan immediately voted for three. I sure did. Yes, yes. Uh, because again, <laughs> it doesn't matter what I try no, to because, do. Because no, no, no. Because your question, I'm looking at it right now, is which is the worst founding legion? It wasn't pick one. There were no explicit instructions, so I picked the three worst. I just, I just felt that it was really weird that I'm like on an island by myself about the Iron Warriors. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I don't get it, but I they're sure, not high whatever. on my list, but they're certainly not in my bottom three. Um, so basically the way that I thought about this, and I thought about it a bunch of different ways where basically I was going to say something along the lines of, okay, if you're going to make an argument, you can't attack someone else, like no ganging up, like, you know, you, you can only defend your legion. And I was like, you know, no, fuck all that. This is no holds barred. We are absolutely going to just let everything fly. And, uh, we are proud enough people that I know that we will not. <laughs> I know that we will not resort to underhanded tactics to win an argument. <laughs> we so, will, we will make sure we we attempt to win based on our arguments alone. Mm. That is what I would like everyone to vote on, the arguments alone, not necessarily your own personal views. Um and so before we get he's, into it, he's trying to explain democracy. Yes, like basically, right. this is how you should vote that's every right. time. Correct. So, but no one does. That's right. So we're just recording a basic conversation of ourselves on a Tuesday. Is that what we're doing? Yes. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's a podcast. This is that was the whole point of the podcast, man. We've talked about this before. Um, I will be defending my my boys, the uh, Imperial Fists. Um, I'm I'm enraged that they're in the bottom three, but I understand it because I've always had to fight this battle. So. <laughs> The good thing here is that I am well prepared for this fight. The bad thing is you've mostly already heard all my arguments. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I was I was gonna say that the first episode I done was like literally ten years ago, and the 180 we've all done on how much the Blood Angels are not hated anymore. I'm very happy about it. It's been a weird decade for me. So it has been a strange one. Uh, the <laughs> Horse Heresy books did a lot for the Blood Angels. <laughs> yeah, no, mm -hmm. and and that's exactly it. Is I feel like. Almost all of these rankings are influenced by those books because even my my firm stance on the Dark Angels being the absolute worst fucking legion stems from the books. Like yes. before, they were just like, ha ha, like, like they were a, the butt end of a joke. But worst have and didn't even rank. But now, whew. save it for the <laughs> fight because Maddie will be defending the Dark Angels. Uh, Maddie has no problem with the Dark Angels and actually quite likes the Lion. So yeah, um, I, I, I will well say placed. I will say from I will say from the books in the last ten years I've actually grown. I didn't like the Dark Angels ten years ago, and through the books I've actually grown to like them. So it's actually a good idea that you we are, we've gone complete Ooh. opposite ways on this as usual, Nathan. Yes, it. <laughs> and with that, uh, Nathan bringing up the uh, heaviest weight uh, in this Ooh. in this uh, argument will be defending the Word Bearers now. Correct me if I'm wrong. You actually don't hate the word bears, do you, Dan? No. In fact, they're probably one of my top three favorite. Yeah, so. I, I don't hate them either. <laughs> yeah, I was I was surprised to see them winning the poll by the number. Like, they have as many votes as Dark Angels and Imperial Fists combined. That's right. And that's why I'm like, well, that's weird. You have the heart, I would say, the heaviest weight to bear. 
but I think that there's a, a lot of good arguments to be made there. Okay, but before we get this podcast started, we have to do what we always do. Uh, Nathan, what are you drinking? I have not been able to go to a liquor store because of this fucking bullshit for a while. Wow, you so did not was... prepare for the <laughs> pandemic? Like, did you just buy food like some asshole? Yeah, I did just buy food when I could fucking find it. Holy <laughs> shit, I've had to scour like seven grocery stores just to buy like what I normally buy. Um, no, so anyway, I have uh, coffee with a maple cream in it for until I'm out of coffee. And then I have a bottle of red that was kicking around. Perfect. Maddie, what are you drinking? Uh, I am drinking a uh, vodka water cranberry. Um, I The first place I stopped at when the virus hit was a liquor store. So... <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> All right. True, true Albertan style. That the yep. most important thing was getting booze before getting food. Yes. Luckily, I also did the same thing. So I'm. Did you buy good. a barrel of crude for four dollars to put your liquor on top of? <laughs> no, I bought a gun safe. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <fuck> guns. <laughs> now um, I am drinking a uh, homemade old fashioned that now has a fly in it. That's just a uh, good omen. I like to think for for my argument tonight is that my drink now has a fly in it. There it is. I got it out. Everyone, it's okay. We did it. We and did it. Uh, for all of we you wondering, it. that is the last time we will be talking about pandemics. Okay. So, are you ready? Because we're getting right into this. I feel like this is the whole show. I'm not, like, if this goes really quickly, we might just be like, all right, let's talk about Picard. But I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think there's any chance that this will go quickly. So, it's very likely that this will be the whole show. We're going to dive right the fuck into it. Everybody asked for it. Here it is. This is the battle, battle for the worst. The first question in the battle for the worst, uh, and once again, we are defending the Imperial Fists, the Dark Angels, and the Word Bearers. Oh, shit. See, I thought these were going to be different discussions. That changes everything. But okay, let's do what this. What do you mean different? Let's... No, no, no. Th this is essentially the first topic of debate. No, yeah, I get that now. You just sent me these five questions when you're just like, hey, these are the things we're going to talk about. So I was expecting us to pepper around and then close with, with defense. But no, okay. No, no, no. Well, we I might close this. with defense. It. We may close with defense, but uh, we're going we're gonna, to, each of these will be a topic of discussion and we will, we will take turns making our point and then arguing. Sound good? Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. Sure, whatever. <laughs> The first question is, which legion has the worst tactics? All right, so uh, everyone will get a chance to defend their legion's tactics, and then we will argue, and then that's going to be it. So who would like to go first here? I'll go. I like to talk. Okay. Woo! <laughs> so which legion of these three has the worst tactics? No. I would have to go, or just in general? like For, So make the case for your legion's tactics. And then after we all make our case, then we'll start firing shots at each other. Got it. Um, so of these three, the word bearers are definitely like tops because at the end of the day, you have to understand that unlike the Imperial fist that just cower behind some fucking fences, you do, you're not supposed to take the best. shots. <laughs> you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? When I say, if I try to put any framework around it, it lasts Listen, Seconds. you literally, you literally ambushed me. You gave me no context for these fucking questions uh -huh. beforehand, and then you ambush me and give me fifteen seconds to think of something well, you said you different than what I had been thinking on how, all day. How about Matt so, goes first, and then you have some <laughs> some time to think? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I could continue. It was just too good. I couldn't help myself. All right, listen. Okay, I'm going to do this. Word bearers. Word bearer tactics are are fucking like ace. Like let's let's talk about how instead of trying to prove whose dicks are the best like fucking iron hands. See, I'm not throwing shots at you guys. Um <laughs> You know, this is a legion that understands the use of chaff. They understand the fucking surprise attack. Calf, need I say more? Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, nothing is going to be finer than the fact that, like, they've got some serious fucking melee heavy hitters when they need it. They're not afraid to throw down big guns. And treachery works just as fucking good. So which legion has the worst tactics? Not us, said the word bearers. 
<laughs> this feels so forced, man. There, like, no, that was good. That was really good. Okay. Um, Matt, would you like to go? Um, sure, yeah. Um, the reason why the Dark Angels have the best tactics is they do have their own flavor of what they do. For those of them being the first Legion, they've been able to expand their tactics for the longest time. Um, they're, I, I love that it's been so long since Matt's been on the podcast, but you can still hear him hand talking every time oh, yeah. he's making a point. You just hear him <laughs> clapping. Yep. Hand talk. <laughs> clapping. Prepare for the class. Podcast, I had Matt. talk Nobody as well, you. but I've lowered my microphone so I don't punch it because that was the rookie mistakes from years <laughs> <That's right>. ago. <laughs> oh, that's right. The pu- microphone punch. Um, yes. No, so the, the Dark Angels are all about specialization. During the Horus Heresy and the Great Crusade, they had like their six hosts. The Hexamonagon, I believe, is called. That's just off the top of my head. I'll be dropping a lot of random-ass Warhammerisms here, I guess, <laughs> in made-up words. Um, when using their when using their tactics, the reason why I like them and why they're not the worst, besides being special, besides having like lots of specialists and being able to use that to like whatever they need to do, when they have their specializations of what they're doing, they're also the best at it. So they have the best they have the best bikers, they have the best shock troops, they have the best um, like heavy weapon platforms for being the oldest legion. They also have some of the, the they also have the army of like the best weapons. And when putting that all into a nice pool of what they can choose from, it lets them be able to specialize where they need to go. Now, of course, they're not the biggest legion, so they don't have, like, the most front-heavy people to actually go do it. But when it comes to actually being able to pick apart people and actually going in and getting out as quickly as possible, or being able to fight a long-standing battle, or being able to get hit something as heavy as hard, no one really does it spe- specialize as well as the Dark Angels. All right. So, the Imperial Fists. Um... Some would say they cower behind walls, but this isn't true. Uh, In fact, they do come out from those walls on a regular basis. They only are used for their specialization of siege craft, siege defense, and fortifications when it is entirely needed. Generally, if you want a a Space Marine Legion to hold a, a planet, hold a station, hold an outpost, this is the Legion that you come to. This is who you call because they will hold that outpost more than anyone else. The Siege of Terra was the greatest test of the Imperial Fists, and they succeeded. And in that goal, it proves that even against overwhelming odds, they have the soundest tactics. Um, When it comes to other legions, a lot of times their tactics are just sort of, we're just good. We're just, you know, hey, we do this. (laughs) <laughs> the Imperial Ultra Fists Marines. are about, yeah, right. The Imperial <laughs> Fists are about tactics. That is the crux of their legion. It is why their legion exists, is tactics. So who has the worst tactics? It's definitely not the Imperial Fists. Now, you guys can fire shots at all times. I'm going to open this up with, holy fucking shit. Listen, the Dark Angels don't have tactics. You can't just say they're just the best. <laughs> Oh, they're just the best at everything. That's not a tactic, okay? <laughs> Their tactic at Blank. the very all, best is secrecy, and they're not as good as the Alpha Legion. <laughs> first, of, first of all, Lang, you want to talk about tactics and being like highly usable and stuff like that, and how they never take anything badly, dude? The Iron Cage—they fucking literally dropped into an empty fucking base and got massacred by the Iron Warriors. You want to talk about fucking tactics? They yeah, have I mean, the worst. Yeah. The Imperial are so Fists are stupid. definitely so the second best Siege Legion out of two. I mean, that's that's fucking yeah. listen, canon. We see that again, all the time. It's not but, just no, about no, no, siege crap. It's about I fortification. Even, it's about I don't defense. even have a, I don't even have an axe to grind with you because at the end of the day, the Dark Angels are the dumbest. Because as <laughs> Matt continually said, they are the oldest, right. and so really all you ever look at is like the OK Boomer of their fucking forceful organization. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> So you don't think that it's good to like mix companies so that way you can like react to things? Oh, you're you're sticking to your your first ever idea? Like that's that's what you're going with? Oh, look at oh. us. We have a whole company of bikes and you said they're the fastest motherfucker white scars. We'll run first, circles around the raven. First, first, first of all, let's talk. First of all, let's talk about the word bears. Yeah, let's the word bears talk about the literally. Word bears. The word bears literally do not have anything they're good at. They're only like the base <laughs> men 
of everything. There's nothing in any write-up that talks about them being good at something. And when you talk about their chapter tactics after they turn the chaos, it literally works on if they can draw enough lines in the sand or build enough rock monsters to pray to something. And if someone knocks over their temple, they're fucked because they're <laughs> such pussies because they don't have any help from the gods. I mean, let's like, talk about, every, let's, let's every... talk about Calif. Let's talk about Calif. You talked about Calif before, and I'm going to mm-hmm. touch on this. Talking about Calif about being their ambush, they lost that battle. It they literally lost sectory. the battle where they had everything stacked in know. their yeah. favor to the Ultramarines. How, how, can you, how can you say literally killing a quarter million Ultramarines and burning an entire planet as a sacrifice to the gods is a loss? That didn't you even work. That in the L column? I mean, well, like, here's the thing. Every single tactic that you reference, Nathan, when you were talking about the word bearers, is not space marines. It can yeah. be applied to anybody. It, it could be applied to to infantry, imperial guard. It could be applied to dark eldar. Like treachery is our tactic. Like that's not a tactic. That's what you do yeah. when you don't have tactics. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, listen, when you're when you're when you're, when, you're st- when your Stonehenge is knocked down, you're just like, oh fuck, I guess I'm taking in the teeth again because my friends didn't help me. And also, the dark angels beat the word bears in their one actual combat in the Horus Heresy as yeah, a fan. That's yes, where they, they lost. They lost that they lost so decisively in the Imperium Secondus that it was embarrassing. Literally, they had a fortified area and f- the lion shows up with half the strength and um, white. I know. Isn't it incredible that when the book is about the Dark Angels, the Dark Angels <laughs> come out on top? I mean, my God, the tactics. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Being the protagonist. Please, hold on. <laughs> I, I, I take umbrage with you pointing out that this argument is over fiction okay you you are not allowed to point out that a particular author (laughs) okay we are arguing fiction as if it is real life please do not break do not break the dream world we are in right now and but here's the thing i understand why most people hate the word bearers because when you come down to the fiction the lazy authors just have a word bearer twirling a mustache with a pants on head stupid plot where it's just like ah, the word bearer here well i'm not working with with lorgar or erebus so i'm just here because he has a pet rock collection <laughs> that I would like to sprinkle blood on. And you're like, how fucking stupid is this? So, like, I totally understand why people dislike it. But again, you're you're calling out the freaking Dark Angels book where it's just like, oh, yes, what a coincidence. The fucking protagonists embarrass the, okay. the, uh, the other, the other the thing, legion. Mm-hmm. At least the word bearers do something. You know, mm-hmm. the, the problem with the Dark Angels is that you, you're only the only thing you said, Matt, was that they're the best. And that's not an argument. It's they're not, not they're not they're not the best. They're just they have specialized units that are the best in the Imperium for what they do. That's why they're specialized. There are weaknesses to the Dark Angels. Yes, no, there's stuff. I wouldn't even argue that they are the best because at the end of the day, they don't have the best Terminators. I'd give that one to something like the Iron Hands or the Imperial Fists. They just have dudes and Terminators. And bathrobes inexplicably. He's because he's called the dude, you know. And even their bikes, they're not the best. Like, yeah, the ra- like the dark angels have like this fucked up, weird chapter hierarchy. And can we talk about how the lion calls everyone little brother? And it just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone's just like, ah, oh, father and sons. He's like, oh, little brother. Oh, we'll, that's we'll an excellent point. And you're like, shut the fuck we will up. We'll get up to Primarchs, but. Oh, my God. I think the the thing with the Dark Angels is that, yeah, okay, put them in any situation. I'm sure they'll be fine. But And you you talk about, like, oh, well, they specialize, and that's what makes them good. But there are a lot of other legions that specialize. And and I think that that is where it all sort of falls flat. The Imperial Fists have tactics. Their whole legion is about tactics. It is about siege craft and fortification and defense. And, like, that is what they were built for, and they do what they were built for. The problem with both of your legions is they don't do what they were built for. They changed halfway through and they started doing something else because they couldn't do what they were supposed to do right. Well, I feel like maybe with the word bearers, it's less about couldn't do what they were supposed to do because I feel like them, you know, balls deep in chaos and like fucking human sacrifice, piles of dudes and demons and Galvorback and all of those things was always what they were meant to do because before that, before Kalth, when they're just literally like 
full on chaos, like fucking blood sacrifices and everything. And they were still trying to pretend they weren't anything special. And I agree with you. So to me, I'm almost just like, yeah, but the word bearers came into their own with this. You know what I also think is funny about this argument? Mm -hmm. Uh, The two loyalists in this group are defending loyalist chapters. And like, (laughs) Nathan, you are not a loyalist. Oh, oh, fuck no. No, no, no. 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 And you're defending the, I I, I think it's funny the way it worked out. My person, like, listen, I am as much a loyalist as ADB is, which is why when you read Master of Mankind, the only thing you can walk away from is <laughs> this motherfucker here. Like, can you, like, I was shocked that the Black Library published that book uh-huh. because it makes the Emperor look so fucking oh, well, bad. Yeah. It is, and it that's is, it's the best, it's the best book in the series. And it's the it's the best way of looking at what the emperor actually is. It's the best book. I, oh yeah, my... yeah, absolutely. And like you read that, and it just really reinforces the whole chaos is right. Like you know, maybe not even chaos is right. Hor- like I am on team fuck the emperor. I'm not necessarily on team chaos gods. So <laughs> right, you know, <laughs> you're you're Zenos. You, you settle firmly in the Zenos pile. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like you're like so, the emperor has some bad ideas, and I don't like them. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so closing arguments on this one. I think we we don't need. I think we've made our points, what we're going (laughs) to make. Um, So we're going to move on to the second topic. Which legion has the worst color scheme? Who'd like to take this one? Matt, how about you go first on this one? I was going to say, how, how could we not shit talk when, when this one's super obvious? No, 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 it's not. It's not super obvious. Listen, just make your point. Just make your point, Matt. Um, the Dark Angels have the best, well, not the best color. <laughs> um, Get that can of black primer, you're done, Matt. Well, yeah, ex- yeah exactly. They are, they, are the, they are the primer painter's army's dream. Like, they go from flat black to flat green. Um, I guess when you're painting them, they're easy. <laughs> um, but you could, but I guess you could say the same thing about the workers. They go from flat gray to flat red, and the Imperial Fists are flat yellow. Um, I, I actually like black as a color for an army. Um, I think it's actually when it's done really good. But when you can be mis- can we, when you look across the field, and you can be like, is that Raven Guard or Dark Angel? Like, I, I get it. I like when they go to green more than they're black. Okay. So with the Imperial Fists, to some people, it may be obvious that... <laughs> I mean, their most defining trait is yellow. So. I, I mean, okay. Here, here's the thing. You know what the night? You know what the great thing about yellow is? Yellow tells people you don't give a fuck. You're not trying to hide. You don't care. It is a color of heraldry. It is a color of of pride. Like it is the sort of thing you wear when you don't give a fuck. You are not trying to hide. You are not trying to you know blend in with the shadows or some shit like that. You are out there. And just, you know, you, you, you just, you don't give a shit. You're, you are ready for what is going to come at you. And uh, I think that when it comes to armies on the table, seeing an Imperial Fist army looks better than both of your armies. So Well, that's only because scheme, painted, 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 painting yellow is a motherfucker. It is a motherfucker. Elf yeah, flesh yellow ink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I, can definitely yeah. Equate, I can definitely equate to painting yellow of when I painted that fleet of ships that yellow is one of the hardest colors to yeah, hey paint, remember yes. my fucking 40 man blood letter squad in yep. yellow who oh. fucking sucked to paint anyway um word bearers word bearers are not just flat red because you are forgetting the fact that the book of lorgar is painstakingly quoted and written out in scripture on every single piece of their armor so we are talking not just about livery we are talking about fucking unique works of art with every single legionary because no two legionaries are quoting the same thing you don't crib the buddy beside you in your squad and copy his fucking colchisian runiform <laughs> as you're engraving your fucking armor so really i mean yeah listen you know when you can see the imperial fists because they pop up from behind their walls they look impressive and you know you're, you're saying I'm not afraid of anything, but I'm never going to come up from behind this wall. So you can't really see them. But like I said, these are masterpieces. You can't, you can't these, help yourself. You can, I really can't. 
<laughs> when you listen, because I recognize that the Imperial fists out of these three have the best fucking livery, so I've got to take the shots that I can get. I, I appreciate you <laughs> conceding victory to me. But like the freaking word bearers, though, each set of armor belongs in a fucking museum because this is art. That is a great argument. I like that. I, uh, I, the, one th- the one thing I hate about the word bears, I hate one thing I hate about the word bears and their fluff is the reason why they're red is it's in one of the books where they say the reason they're red is because of so much blood from the yep. from the Siege of Terra. So really, they're, they didn't even paint their color red. They're just like really like Dirty. mundane. World, they're like really mundane world eaters at that Fucking point. Space lame. hobos at that point. Yeah. We just yeah. don't, yeah. we don't yeah. have laundromat services. <laughs> and I will point they went, out they went from this they went from this cool gray they went from this cool like steel gray like stone gray look to like. We just don't wash anymore. Fuck it, blood. And I'm just like, isn't that the world eaters thing? I don't, I don't get that. I think that's kind of fucking lazy. Well, and I will point out in this argument that uh, the Imperial Fist colors have remained true, whereas both of your legions changed their colors at some point. They weren't, they weren't even happy with their colors. Well, yeah, because at the end of the day, traitor legions all change their livery. That's true. <laughs> that is very, very true. Um, here's Where, the thing. Whereas loyalist legions, dark angels remain- are boring. They're boring. That's just it, okay? There's nothing good about the Dark Angels color scheme. It's so boring that they have to wear bathrobes in order to make their army more interesting, and it still looks fucking stupid, okay? Because let's be real Mm -hmm. here. The fucking 30K Dark Angels color scheme was thought up 10 minutes to printing time, which is why they are one of three fucking all-black legions. legions. We're black on black. And you're like, God damn it. Like, you know, there is like Are you defending nailed it. the Dark Angels right now, Nathan? No, I am not defending them at all. They're boring as shit. That's yes. what I'm saying. They're like boring. Dark, Dark Angel livery sucks. And that's why in 40k, like all trader legions, they change their livery to try to make it a little more interesting. Okay. Um, I genuinely don't like the word bearers color scheme. I think that it is one of the, not necessarily laziest, but like the worst combinations of colors. Nothing about it pops. Nothing about it catches attention. It's just sort of, it, it's it's less cool than the Dark Angels, but just as boring. See, uh, like I you, you disagree. Wanna... If you want to argue that Blood Angels pops because they've got that deeper red, they've got the stronger contrast colors, like I'm I'm all for, for conceding that ground. But saying that it's just as bad or boring well, as the Dark Angels? Uh-uh. Here's what no, I'm getting sir. at, though. Is that, similarly to the Dark Angels, they have to add something to it. They have to they have to put a little bit of extra on top. The argument that you made about, like, all the Colchisian cuniform um, is that... Uh, just that it tickles me. Um, it, like, that's a good argument. Like, the, the idea that it's like, no, they're like this because there's a story behind it. That's true. I think that that makes perfect sense. There's nothing there for the Dark Angels. It's just, it's fucking nothing. It's fucking shit. It's boring. It's stupid. I hate black armies. I don't think they look good. They are the absolute worst. It's the laziest thing you can paint. And like when you see when we reviewed that stupid yeah, but, yeah, but Dark yeah, but Angels the most, model, yeah, yeah, but how the much most of it was the actual color scheme black, of the Dark Angels? Dark. Oh, so little. They had to do, like, the Games mm-hmm. Workshop treatment of let's just throw fucking winged swords yes. times infinity right. all over this model let's so we can paint them up. in a color that's not black. Let's cover this thing up as much as possible, yes. <laughs> I just feel I just feel like they're the most on the nose. They're dark angels. They wear black. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> they wear black. They have wings. Fuck you. This is where well, we it's, are. It's, it's, the same, it's the same thing with Imperial Fist. Imperial is... Imp- the imperial color is gold. You could you call yeah. them the gold fists. They're the, they're also on the nose. If, 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 uh, what's it called? Listen, if we want Loyalist to be on the, nose, on the nose, Loyalist no legions one... are, are on the nose about colors. Blood angels, red. Dark angels, black. Imperial fist, yellow. <laughs> Ultra breeds. <laughs> um, also, blue. Like, you want to can talk we about talk about... No, Being no. a loyalist means your colors are on the nose. Like Not it's just it's your is. colors. Ferris Ravens Madness are black because Ravens are black. Yes. Yes. says... It's a little on the nose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Listen, Listen, this was the one that Dark Angels weren't going to win because no. they are an all-black army. I, We're I, black. I, I, What's your accent color? More black. 
I literally, hey, literally, in my defending argument, I compared them to the Raven Guard. Let's just, let's just go on from there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, like, what do you, like, what do you want me to say? They're fun, like their color scheme sucks. Like, this. all right, all right. That's okay. Lang can't win this one. Oh, fuck this you. next one. <laughs> I, I have an argument prepared. Let's just put okay. it that way. Okay. Let's see it. Um, which Legion has the worst home world? Um, I will open because it's my turn. Um, okay, so the Imperial Fist homeworld is Terra. And uh, if you don't like that, then it's the Phalanx, and I'm willing to argue both. But essentially, Terra is their home world. That is where their uh, Marines are stored. That's where they're made. That's where they're trained. This is where they defend. Terra is the heart of the Imperium. It is where the Emperor resides. It is where mankind spread out into the galaxy. It is the most important piece of the Imperium of Man, and it requires the most important Legion out of all of the Legions, and that is the Imperial Fists. <laughs> most important. <laughs> hey, I, I mean, firmly if, believe... if, if we're allowed to do this, keep in mind that every Legion's original numbers hailed from Terra, so uh, everything Lang just said applies to the word bears. No, no, no. Because no, if, if he is actually... going to completely no, disregard no, no, no. Nathan, the fact that Nathan. he has a giant rock in space with engines on it and doesn't have a home world, <laughs> and then just pull some Terra bullshit. We both... wiki, it says Terra. Nathan, have Nathan, Terra. Nathan, Nathan, I got this. Nathan, I got right. this. Wait, it's not your time to argue yet. <laughs> yeah, I got this. I got Nathan, I got this. Everybody Don't worry. gets a chance this. to make their argument, okay? <laughs> I got this, Nathan. Here it I is. All right. Listen. When it comes to this, every wiki I looked at said Terra, okay? And then the Phalanx uh, is essentially I, their headquarters. Wrong. Okay, wrong, you, wrong, I'll wrong. argue the Phalanx then. No, it's not the fa it's not the fa it's not the Phalanx either. Then what is it? It's Inuit. Rogel Dorn is from Inuit, and and in their wiki, it states that the only two the only two worlds that are allowed to be recruited from for the Imperial Fist is Inuit and Necromunda. So they don't even take Terra as their main recruiting station, and it's not their home world. So you don't even you don't even know your own fluff. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, this, this is hey. what I looked at, man. I don't know. Let me yeah. fucking right. do some extra okay, googling. Fine. Apparently, while but... Lang while Lang is doing some extra googling, let's just talk about Colchis for a second because um, I believe in all of the Word Bearers books, especially in the first Heretic, Colchis is vividly described in a two paragraph flashback. So it's, I have no fucking it, idea what dude, Colchis has. Like you're just like dude, uh, their, dude, their wiki is their wiki's barren. It's it's yeah, yeah. so that's why I'm just like, uh, I mean, the Imperial Fists get a DQ because they don't really have one, and it's never mentioned. It's mentioned so little that uh, that Lang, whose favorite Legion is the Fists, didn't even know it. <laughs> um, so like I said, I mean, Colchis is a planet. Homeworld, <laughs> and... Terra, formerly Inwit. Thank you. That's what the and fucking what they... 40k wiki says. It's fucking and, Terra. And... And and look and and look on Inwit where they do the where they do the recruiting. It's Inwit and Necromunda. They don't recruit from Terra. I mean that's that, cool because Necromunda is hard as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Matt. You you made my argument better. We'll we'll get to this later. Uh, all right, let's let let's let uh, Nathan make his argument for Colchis. Oh no, I'm I'm done. There oh, wow. is nothing okay. about Colchis. Like Matt. this is why I'm like I genuinely have nothing because I was told. At the begin, while we were recording, that I needed to have looked this up, so uh, Col I got nothing. Col essentially, in the fluff, Colchis is like uh, is like shitty techno. Um, what's it called? The Vatican? It's like Listen, shitty. No, like shitty I'm not. All I am, all I am imagining in my mind is like fucking Rise of Skywalker, Burning Man planet, but more red. Well, here's the <laughs> that's, thing. That's like, my, that is my head cannon for Colchis. Let's yeah, do it. It, they, they talk about it as having like a very complex biosphere. It has like all this crazy technology and biology and stuff like that. It was considered to be a sort of barren, beautiful planet. Um, it's, I know it's, more it's, about this shit than you do. Wow, this is going to be a really three, interesting. It's three, it's three times. It's three times larger than Earth, and like yep. it's date, and it's like uh, one year is like five Earth years, and it's like a very Wait, slow moving it. planet. There are some legions where their planet shapes them. Barbarous shaping the Death Guard, for example. Colchis was just the place he was born. Like, no, no, that's no, that's wrong too. Because Colchis is a chaos planet, and like the people of that planet are chaos worshippers. That's exactly why Logar is actually how it is. Because Corferon was like the biggest. No, no, Corf I knew that Corferon was, like, was, was a like, chaos was, like, priest. Was, like, chaos guy in the in the world. 
Like the and then the, he was like, oh, hey, look, the All Emperor, right. you're gone too. We'll get to this. Matt, Crazy. Caliban. Um, I think I think Caliban's the coolest. Well, I, Caliban is the coolest world of the three here. Uh, Caliban is like is like Sherwood Forest on crack. It's got like all these crazy fucking animals. They got questing knights going through it. For you to become like a for you to become like an order of the night, you got to go slay like some like crazy like cracked out demon thing. It's a death world, so it's very hard to live on. And so when the hardened warriors, also a chaos world. It is a chaos world. Yes, it is. I'm, I was getting. I was gonna get to that. All right, all right. I was gonna get to that. Um, it is close to the Eye of Terror. Uh, I'm not Eye of Terror. Eye of Terror. Eye of Terror. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason why it's one of the coolest worlds is because it's like Cat. Is it Catachans? Catachans yeah. are the de- are the Death World Imperial Guard, right? Yes. Am I? Do I still know that? Catachan is is the the Death World. Jungle yeah. World. Yeah. Jungle World. Yeah. So it's like it's like Dark Catachan where. And it's a very warrior race set up, built around like the like the ecosystem of like what the world is. Um, everybody from there is hard as fuck. Um, it's a tough world to live on. It's got crazy dark jungles, crazy animals, demons. It's just it's just a very interesting place to have. And Luther pouting. Around. What? And pouting. And Luther pouting. <laughs> and Luther pouting. Yeah. <laughs> also on. It's, Caliban. it's one of the. It's it's the most interesting of the three worlds. For anybody to come well, from. Well, yeah, I mean, we've got the Imperial Fists with a DQ. And like I said, Colchis, that was described briefly yeah. in like a two-paragraph flashback. My, my, Sorry, my, notes on, my notes on Inuit, on my paperwork here, is literally, a, is literally a sentence. And it says, it's an ice dead world. I live in Edmonton. I know this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Colchis is, is terrible. It's like the emoist planet you could possibly go to. The, the, the capital city is known as the City of Grey Flowers, which is just the worst. I mean, that is – it says so much about that planet that that is the name of this fucking – of their capital city on I mean, this shitbox planet. Let, I'm not l- – listen, you know how Dark Angels were going to lose the most interesting color scheme? Dark Angels are winning Homeworld because you've got a DQ. Mine no. sucks. No, and I do not outfit. accept a DQ. I will argue this because I got some shit to say about Caliban. I'm just starting with Colchis. <laughs> it's such a piece of shit planet, it couldn't even survive being virus bombed. It Its fragile ecosystem caused it to fucking explode when it was virus bombed. That's a shitty planet right there. Yeah. That and is also, a fragile and, and ass homeworld. It was killed by the Ultramarines. Like, who, yeah. like who lets that happen? <laughs> that is a fucking joke. Here's the thing about Caliban, though, okay? Caliban is essentially the worst parts of medieval England. <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Slavery, a caste system. Okay. Yeah, sure. And if you were born into one of the knightly houses, it might be kind of okay. And you even said it's a fucking death world. That's awful. Awesome. That's terrible. I'd rather so, live in Edmonton. In, so, so it's what, not a so death what, world. In, guess what? Guess what? Inwit, a world you didn't even know five minutes ago. That's fine. I know everything I need to know about it now. It's, All right, listen. It's, it's an it's an ice world that has no natural resources. It has nothing going on Except to it. The, it's it only natural resource guards. is the only one that matters. The best Space Marine legionaries <laughs> in the fucking galaxy. Here's the thing All about right, Caliban. Listen. Okay, we and know got, you know you got a DQ. No, Caliban I I will not accept this DQ. I it is up to <laughs> the judges are not the two of you. Okay, I do not take a DQ on this. I can argue anything. Here's the thing. <laughs> The Imperial Fists are so good, they've got three home worlds. Okay? <laughs> Terra. Okay? The fucking Phalanx and Inwit. And all of those together is like fucking baller as shit. What other Legion has three home worlds? Tell me. Okay? Caliban, if you're not born into one of the Knightly Orders, it is a fucking shit show. And the people of that planet are pieces of shit. That's how bad that planet is. If they're emo on Colchis, that's fine. But on Caliban, they're all assholes. And it, and you know what? You know that that's true because half that legion is fucking chaos, okay? <laughs> that shit actually, is fu- That actually, whole planet actually, actually, is fucked one of the, up. Actually one, of the major, actually, one of the major traitors in the Dark Angels is a Terran. So it had nothing to do with being from Caliban. Uh, I was cool. going to say Luther is from Caliban. Yeah, and Luther he was, created the whole fucking shit. There. But but his but his right but his right hand lieutenant of the uh, of the of the Dark Angels Revolt is a Terran. 
So we're not saying yeah, Terrans well, are perfect. Lorgar Nobody's is also perfect. from Terra. Come Again, on. we can keep just remember half the legions are from Terra. Like ha, like half of I'll, all. I'll of argue legions. in with man. It's still better than a death world. Listen, <laughs> like it Edmonton is a death sucks, world, but Edmonton is not a on death its world. Wiki. It says the death world. I mean, so you have because it's cool. Thing. It's wor- It's a death so world. Of have... course, it's the worst. So you have balmy death world or frozen death world. Yeah. Or, or the city of the gray flowers. Well, listen, all I'm saying is I don't have a death world. Boom. Winner. Let's move on. <laughs> listen. I'll... All right. Well, let's move on. Okay. We're getting in. We're getting deep now. Okay. We're getting into the deep cuts now. Okay. All right. Topic number four. Which legion has the worst Primarch? All right. So, Nathan, it's your turn to start. Defend mm. Lorgar. I mean, sure. That's not hard at all. Like, <laughs> Lorgar is literally the OG. He is like the fucking Wu Tang clan of Primarchs. He was the first to find chaos. He <laughs> fucking wrote the Bible on the subject he actually wrote two bibles on the sub <laughs> on the subject one for the emperor and then one not um and again literally everything that happened was because of him his plotting his machinations he had fucking babysitters of the adeptus custodes watching his every move just to make sure that he wasn't going to worship the emperor again he discovered the existence of gods founded a religion under their noses because he's just smarter and better than they are and then fucking murdered them when it su- when it suited him and made it look like an accident so they could ship their bodies back or at least what remained of them so i mean like let's be real here the only reason we had a horus heresy the only reason the 41st millennium is what it is is because of lorgar all he's, right. He's the OG, man. All right. Maddie, the lion. <laughs> the lion is better than Rogel Dorn and <laughs> Logar for many reasons. Is he just oh my the best? God, no. <laughs> no, no, no. He's the best. He's, he's the just first. the best. He specializes he's the in Primark. He's the, best. <laughs> he's, uh, the lion saved the entire northern hemisphere of the Imperium from the Regenocide. From the Xeno Regenocide, which lost, which cost him fifty thousand Space Marines. But again, when you're defending the entire Northern Hemisphere of the Imperium, you have to be a tactical fucking genius to do that. I don't remember Logar doing anything like that, and all Rogal Dorn ever did was build some fucking walls. No, you're right. He he just hold on, hold on Nathan. You know, hold, he hold, just betrayed. Let, let, let him make his argument. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Just if you want, if you want, we're not to Dorn yet, okay? <laughs> if you if you want if you want if you want to talk about if you want to talk about combat, I have like, written a dissertation acumen. on why Lionel Johnson is the worst. So you guys just fucking prepare. Oh, don't worry. You, Matt has three pages on how Lorgar is a piece of shit. I'm just gonna kind of <laughs> sit back during this argument, <laughs> but like, let Matt finish, please. Um, the Lion is one of the only people to beat Conrad Cruz in combat twice he beats him in combat twice which is pretty astronomical for a guy who can literally see the fucking future he's he he was he was the main he was the main proponent of taking mulch mulch for the emperor before his mind was wiped him and Hor- him and horace were, were the were the two major players so if you and horace can go toe to toe on being tactical fucking geniuses i don't know anybody else who can do that he beat conrad cruz twice he doesn't take shit from anybody. He punched out Lehman Russ. When when, when when his subordinates beef with him, he murders them. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, hold on. He's making... No, he's listen. already flipped over to my argument. No, he's, <laughs> he's literally thrown it out as a positive. This is a good way to argue. Continue. Interesting strategy, Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it works out for it. Um, <laughs> uh, talking about outsmarting Conrad Cruz, he ambushes his fleet. Again, a guy who can see in the future, and he ambushes him so badly that he wipes, he pretty much wipes out half of his legion in a combat. He's the, he was named the Lord Protector of all the Ultramar Sagmar. For oh, one, for fuck one off, because it was default, motherfucker. Hey. Well, hey, I already hey, named this hey, one let me, Emperor, let me finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Nathan, let me you finish. gotta bottle it up, man. When, 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 
when when Raboot, Gulliman, and Sanguinius say you're the best general of us three, that's pretty good. That's pretty good company to be in. It's not like it's not but like Ferris, Manus, and Fulgrim were just like, hey man, you're better than us. That's pretty fucking obvious. Um, and lastly, he's the only one who figured out Cruz's riddle. In Imperium Secondus, he's the one who figures out the way Cruz was talking during his trial, that he's the one who figured out that the Emperor is still alive. Right. He's the he's the main reason Sanguinius and Gulman get back to going to Terra and, and, instead of like making Imperium Secondus what it was. He's the one who figured out the okay, way Cruz was talking wrap it up, about, Matt. The, Emperor I think gonna have about the Emperor still being alive. <laughs> so Sorry, he's say, a that last thing. say that last thing again. He was the only one who figured out Cruz's no, no, riddle about the last Emperor's sentence. Being just alive. The last sentence. What what last sentence? All right, never mind. You're done. Okay. okay. Nathan is going to have an aneurysm. Okay. I have a PhD on Johnson being a scumbag. Right. So Ro Rogue Eldorn is the only Primarch who takes his job seriously. Okay. He is the only person who actually takes his job seriously. He is the only person who does not shy away from anything that gets thrown at him he is the the only primarch that doesn't hide behind magic or like specialized weapons or like specialized tactics this no, motherfucker is the only primarch that says yep chain sword that's fine i'm good so, with that no nope, i'm not that done yet i am I know, not done I'm yet just saying that you no. just admitted that they have no tactics so lang conceded no. point one i'm not conceding anything <laughs> this is a good try nathan but no and you shut the fuck up okay um, here's the thing. Rogal Dorn does everything he says that he will do. And he is good to his men. And he cares about his men. And he cares about the Imperium. And when it comes down to it, he dishonored he fucks up everyone he fights. This man doesn't lose fights. Like, this is what it except, comes down to. And this dude does it with a chain sword, okay? A I chain mean, sword. That's the ballerest shit there is. Okay, since you guys can't fucking help yourselves, go. <laughs> you guys can't. All right. All right, listen. Listen. <laughs> these are these are like two of my three most hated Primarchs. So, like I said, I've got I've got novellas for both I really, of you. really... Okay. <laughs> the <laughs> lion first. Well, I mean, no, no, listen. Tell me, tell, me, tell me why Lorgar's good first. Please, tell me. Oh, you no, did. no, no. I did. The, I, that's where we started. So the lion. The lion is easily the worst Primarch of the bunch because at the end of the day, he is petty, he is small, and he is impetuous, and he is above all else a hypocrite. So this is the guy who, when another Primarch deputized a fucking portion of the Dark Angels to go and, like, stop an imminent threat that was that was potentially attacking Terra, had a hissy fit, yelled at Horus for it, you know, the future war master, and then grounded an entire third of his legion to the home world mm -hmm. where he left them to rot because how dare they follow orders from a Primarch that isn't him? So, I mean, like, first of all, like, just... He's the, a giant the fucking, baby. That's oh, the problem. This is the problem with Lion Johnson. Johnson. Fucking first, baby. First he's a all, terrible all, leader. Your numbers are skewed. It was 200 Marines. That's not a third of a legion. It was 200 Marines. Listen, it is. He is. And his after master. Yes, fucked, that's right. right. He, he is a giant child. This is the problem with Lionel Johnson. And they gave him that posting to control him because that's all Lionel Johnson ever has happened to him is that he gets controlled by other people. Mm -hmm. People have to like pump him up. They have to like prevail to his prideful side. Yeah. They have to make him no, feel you're like the he's so great. Listen, you're general, the best. All of all of us, you should definitely be in charge because they knew that if they they if he they didn't stroke his ego, yep. he would just have a tantrum and either attack them or leave. And he's and they such needed the fucking manpower. He's such a bad leader. He kills his own men for disagreeing with him, and on top of that, he's such a bad leader that. Half of his fucking legion goes, yeah, we're not down with this guy anymore. That's some shit. Okay? You know what's better it than it wasn't half. We literally, it wasn't know, half. we literally know that this is our Primarch. We are descended of him. But 
these random chaos gods demanding blood sacrifices are less of a douchebag than he is. At because least... we're not even getting to the fact that when he discovered a demon, even after the heresy, he understands that demons are evil. They are tools of the warp. He's just like, yo, bro, steer my spaceship. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, fucking douchebag. And again, uh, the 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 man, the Trigrada man is not confirmed as a demon yet. Okay, first of all, that's wrong. <laughs> it's not a demon. Uh, you don't know that. It's been confirmed. It can just see through the warp, possesses people, and has demon powers. So how not could a, we not, know? not confirmed as a demon? Nope, not confirmed. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, Matt's taking the uh, the Lionel Johnson approach to arguing his point, but I appreciate that. Let's talk about Logar for a little bit here because... And then I am coming back at Rogaldorn. No, there's nothing to say about Rogaldorn. He's fucking great. Listen, fucking Logar, at least Logar is a leader. He's a good enough leader that his whole chapter follows him all the way through. But the guy is just the worst. Like, he loses every fight. He's, he's the absolute worst fighter out of all the Primarchs. All he does is continually get his ass kicked... Unless he, like, pulls a folding chair out from under the ring to hit somebody on the back of the head while the ref is Oh, my walking. God. This is oh my the God. only you went where, way you went this where man I was going. wins any fights. He gets constantly slapped around. He was the Primarch that worshipped the Emperor and created the whole mythos of the Emperor being a god. And then he fucked off with that and went after other gods who stroked his ego and made him think he was the best, but well, ultimately just used right. him as a tool. Listen, he, right, the let only me, reason he went for other gods is because me, the emperor fucking embarrassed him. Remember, the me, emperor, me, yeah. the king of the douchebags, because we remember every one of the primarchs has an aspect of the emperor. The lion has the douchebag <laughs> that the emperor has, so it's just magnified as like let me, prime let me Let me jump in here about Logar. This, sure. is, my, this is my moment. And also, I like the folding chair comment because you're going exactly where I was going with this. <laughs> you're going exactly where I was going with this. All right, <laughs> let's talk about what I have written down here. The highlights of Logar's incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ooh, highlights, this will be quick. <laughs> yeah. As touched on before, yes, the emperor did call him a failure. <laughs> Not arguable. Made his entire, was so pissed off at him that he decided to bring the entire Ultramine Legion to destroy his favorite planet that he built and then made them all bow and look incompetent. After having extreme daddy issues, he gets manipulated by his other dad and whoa, another whoa, 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 space screen. Listen, I'm going to time out the daddy issues because literally every yeah. single Primarch they, except they for Big issues. Bobby G hey, has daddy issues. Hey, so, I hey, mean, that's really, this is just a sore wound that applies to us all. I'm using... I'm using the daddy issues thing to to take it back into his other daddy issues, which makes him easy manipulatable to a human. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To a human. Mm -hmm. Like I don't see other any other primarchs being manipulated by humans or their own marines. Mm -hmm. But this guy's so gullible that he was literally because he's not the orchestrator of the uh, of the heresy. It's actually Erebus and Corferon. He was just a pawn. He was just a pawn, and that's the biggest way you can describe Logar for the entire heresy. He is a pawn and. I will take a I will take a diverge from that. I know the writers have to have someone who takes the brunt of it, and through this whole argument, I know that Logar is written to take the brunt of it. But oh, it is yeah. so it is so <laughs> embarrassingly bad when you go through the actual timeline of it, which we're gonna do. It, it, it is comical sometimes. Oh, we are not comical. gonna hit the entire timeline. We don't have that kind of time here. He man. goes no no no. I have I have a high I have a highlight here. He right. he, he 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 gets on the Instagram right, side. <clears throat> Talking about him being a terrible fighter. He loses the Korax. No, no, no. Listen, we all know that he is a terrible fighter because not all of them are great fighters. We also know that Big Bobby G isn't a great fucking fighter because he's a goddamn bureaucrat. Like, let's so, can we just but, talk about how the Ultramarines are the accountants legion? And that's that's the fucking truth of it. So not but here's, all but of them are the going thing. to be Angron. Not all of them are going to be the best no, duelists. The, They're not all going to be Rogaldorn. The the the, conti the, the, the continuous he is thing not even in the top five of best Fuck you. Right? <laughs> the, the continue the continuous thing about Logar is that yes he fights Korax he gets saved by he gets saved by Cruz he fights Gulaman he loses he gets saved by Agron again there's a common theme of him being saved here mm -hmm. 
So what you're telling me is he's really good, like senior management, and knows how to have middle managing no. prime marks around no. him in no. order to, to no. bail him out and no. make he's him also, good. That's he's, all also, I'm he's also he's also a coward. Listen, he's also a coward. In what when he in, teleported down and took a Titan weapon plasma no. cannon to the face? That's no, scary. when no, he has no his his grand plan to overthrow Horus in Slaves of Darkness involves him. <laughs> That's Being so scared book. of the repercussions of knowing what Falgram's name and name is, he gives it to one of his subordinates. Mm -hmm. He takes the subordinate, he controls Falgram, and his master plan is he's going to use Falgram to kill Horus. How does this master plan go? It gets instantly fucked up. In yeah, instantly. <laughs> <laughs> instantly fucked up. Because See, I haven't read Slaves to Darkness because I it's tended terrible. to avoid it's most awful. of it. It's genuinely yeah. awful. If you, if you have, it's, Nathan, if you haven't read it, this last part is just Slaves of Darkness. Yeah, this is, cool. this is the end of the book. Got this, it. Yeah, this is the end of the book. So in the end of the book, he, he his, his master plan, he goes to Fulgrim and he's like, I'm going to overthrow Horus. He, he, but, he, but he learns that to know Fulgrim's name, it has such a terrible like cast on your like mental state. That he that he's like, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to give it to one, one of my right hand guys, and his his right hand guy learns it, takes over Fulgrim, as in like knowing knowing a demon's name, you get to fully control it now. Struts to Olinar because Horus is like redoing the whole thing, and his master plan is like, huh, I'm going to kill Horus now. Instantly, a demon from the warp tells Horus this, so <laughs> so Olinar shows up. He's getting trolled by Fulgrim the entire time, like literally, Fulgrim is like, right, listen. This is this is going on too long, and I haven't shit on Rogaldorn yet, friend. Listen, no, there's okay. nothing like, to listen. listen. All you guys are doing is mounting the failures of both of your primarchs. There's none. I know. I like how Leg is trying to cut me off so that nope. I don't get started. Me, All let, right. Let me let me let me finish. I don't let me finish need this. you to finish. You're telling no. me the end of a bad book. No, but like, I let me finish this. <laughs> he shows hey, up. Remember Ben Counter's books? Boy, they sure were good. <laughs> I'm getting to. I'm getting to a Nathan. I'm getting to a joke. He's getting. All right, all right let, it, let it get get in there. I man. had a joke. I had a joke at the end of this. Okay, this is the longest build up to a punchline. I had a joke here. Okay. All right. Shows up. Instantly, Horace knows it. Gets punched in the face. Beat up. Sent away. Fulgrim, his right hand guy, betrays him. Fulgrim beats him up. Horace tells him to like fucking fight him. Throws his weapon at him. He like is on the ground all like fucked up and crying and in the dirt and horse is like fighting. He's like, man, I can't do it anymore. And he's all like, man. And then horse is like, well, get the fuck out of here. Sends him away. So Logar is the only traitor Primark who doesn't actually lead his own legion onto the onto the onto the fields of I mean, Terra. Neither, neither did Kurtz. Well, Kurtz didn't either. Yes, but he was like gone a long time ago. He wasn't even part of it. But anyways, he's there crying, and he's like, "Ma, yeah, I can't." He was shot in the fucking cryo tube. Hold on, this punchline's going to be a winner. Let him get to it. All right. So essentially, what we're looking at here is someone who loses all his fights, gets kicked around, uses weapons, gets those weapons used against him, has people turn against him. He's the Triple H of the Warhammer Forty. Oh defense. my god, that was such a long setup. Wow. Okay. See, but I Rogel really like Triple H. Fucking. That's Dorn. All right. <laughs> Rogaldorn <clears throat> Come at is like literally just Ferris Manus with a head. Nah. So this is a dude <laughs> that it loses his temper all the goddamn time. Let's not forget the fact that he banished his first captain because his first captain is like, but what if uh, what if you get an order and it's literally wrong? Like all of the chaos dudes got orders to be like to betray the emperor, but if they didn't follow that order then th this whole thing would have been gone, and Rogaldorn is like, how dare you? Only discipline, only following orders is the only thing, and so for even thinking that it would sometimes be okay, you're banished. And you're like, what the fuck is this? He, he's got a bad fucking temper. All he does is just seethe and pout all the oh, goddamn time. Pounced. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we've had 50 books of fucking Horus Heresy, and all he's done is just stand on Terra going, we've got to prepare. No. I mean, if we want to talk about he killed the Alpharius. Primark, maybe. He killed <laughs> Alpharius with a fucking again, chainsword. That dude had a magic spear, again, and he fucking killed him with a chainsword, Maybe. Son. Again, here's the thing with the Alpha Legion. It could have <laughs> just been some dude. 
and there, we there, don't and there was also and there's also an easy fight and, and there's also and there's also yes. psychic imprinting of memories between him and him and, him and patch so Listen, here's he might thing. not be dead your your he's, whole argument is that he's like, kind of a no. dick he's a militaristic dick yeah sure <laughs> Got it. They, they're all kind dick of dicks. that accomplishes nothing because at the end of the day, he just stands there on Terra destroying artwork in order to put gun emplacements down there. Just and, and, the also, and, also on, and also on Terra and also on Terra on cradle of mankind. And they even then isn't able to hold the walls, son. And, al and also on Terra when on Terra, when he's there trying to like rally the troops, Sanguinius and and uh, Jakati Khan literally undermine him all the time <laughs> because they because, disagree. Because he's literally they have so little respect. They have so little respect for him. He, Jakati, he's like he's like Jakati, don't go uh, uh, get, uh, out of the walls. Jakati Khan instantly rides his entire no. legion over J the walls. Jakati Khan he's is like, a rebel. Sanguinius, don't stand on the walls. Sanguinius goes out and fights people, and he's like, "Why are you guys doing this? Just listen to me." And they're just like, "Fuck you." Sanguinius is a rebel. That dude's a biker. Like He's going to do whatever he wants anyways. It doesn't matter. He's going to rebel against authority. And Rogel Dorn is the epitome of an authority figure, okay? Sanguinius can see the future. That's cheating. He doesn't know the future, okay? All he can do is plan for what he can plan for. Listen, so what, the thing with Rogel so, so Dorn is that Khan? he saves what's the your Emperor's life. He does what Sanguinius couldn't do in the end. He is the reason why the Imperium of Man He exists. wasn't destined to save his life. He knew that. He No, he went up there and he fucking got it. He got it, dude. He flew it down. Listen, here's the thing about Rogel Dorn. All your arguments are that he's a militaristic dick. Okay, fine. But they're all okay. dicks. All the Primarchs are dicks. He was a militaristic dick who over the nine years that the heresy raged had one fucking job and fumbled it on the one yard It line. was an impossible so for job. nine years... For nine years, he had one thing to do. Yeah. You have all of these traitor legions getting fucking bled dry through a decade of warfare, and they are constantly fighting and battling, and they are getting bled dry. So by the time they get to Terra, you have the fresh, prim and proper Imperial Fists because they have been cowering behind walls for a decade. Following against orders. literally depleted legions. And he still dropped the ball. He and, butt and, fumbled, and, and, man. And at, Beta, and at Beta Gamora, he couldn't even bring himself to lead the army to Beta Gamora to face Horus. Sanguinius did that. He was just like, you know what? I think we really need to hold Beta Gamora, but I'm not going to lead it. Sanguinius will. Because like, he was what? told not to leave Terra. Listen, this dude it, follows orders. Like I said, he's the it, only primer who takes his job seriously, no matter how bad it makes him look. He is willing he to he hates, follow orders. He hates, yeah. his, he hates his best fighter so much, he put him on Pluto. Sigma well, Sid listen, was, that, was, that guy did some shit he shouldn't have been doing, okay? Because, again, yes, in the he Imperial said, Fists... He said, if I was given an order to turn against the Emperor, I would refuse it because it's a bad order. And that made Rogel Dorn flip his shit. Because that, when Rogel Dorn gives an order, you have to follow it. That was a the theoretical discussion based <laughs> around the idea that... He, Rogel Dorn's whole argument was that he would never give that order, Right. <laughs> and that it was the fact that he was being subordinate. That's all it was. And Rogel Dorn, sure, your argument is that he's a militaristic dick. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that that's not dick true. Who fumbled his one job that he had ten years? But hey, the Imperium of Man still existed. That's not fumbling. That was an impossible job. Even he said they are going to breach the walls. It's not about defending the walls. It's actually, about probably actually, everything actually, else. Warriors actually, would have defended it per perfectly. No, in fact, in Angel Exterminatus, when they flipped per the simulation and they had Perturabo oh, in a building simulation? the defenses, actually. They actually, what, whooped actually, the shit out was, of it, defended actually, it every what, time. Actually, what happened was his defenses were going to hold in a standard combat, but Sanguinius was even the one who said, symbols matter. And Dorn was like, what do you mean? And then there's a warp storm in the sun, and the entire fleet comes from behind, and he's like, oh, fuck, now we're, what? He's just, he's confused about warp storms. He's you're, like, what do you mean? You're right. What do you think? He's, he's, he's not like, he's interested like, in chaos. He has no he interaction okay, with it. No. How the fuck Listen, is he supposed to know that there's going to be okay, a warp fine. storm in the sun? Let's talk about the fact that five Alpha Legionnaires that were buried in crates 50 years ago embarrassed him, embarrassed the defenses in the entire Sol system, ran circles around him. Keep in mind that these were five emaciated dudes that spent four decades in stasis buried in the ground. We, and, and they ultimately they, failed. Fuck. You're right. Five guys against the entire might of a legion. I'm so glad you had no, the no, might no, of a right. legion. No, one one, one, they didn't, one the legion, legion didn't against five. You're right. Those odds are shitty. 
Yeah, those odds are... Alpha Legion didn't fail. They got the they got the information Horace needed. Just yeah. Alpharius didn't expect to die. Maybe. Expect but did he die? The uh, Peach probably. No. Listen, he probably didn't die because we all know that he is working with Eisenhorn right now. And God damn it, Dan Abnett, you are quarantined. Hey, get that fucking Finish book, this please. fucking book. Okay, listen, <laughs> you guys want to, you guys make some points about Rogue Aldorn that are pretty overstated, okay? <laughs> what it comes down to is he hasn't failed, really. And he <laughs> actually treats his troops well because this, even if he disagrees with until, them, at least he sends until, them to sent- Pluto and he doesn't murder them on the bridge of his ship because they disagree. Until, 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 his, until, his, until, his, ego, until his ego sends them to die at the Iron Cage. He literally, he literally did not want to run in the Listen, Iron Cage. All of our legions he, have fallen into traps. Traps are traps, okay? That's just, you can't just be like, oh, but they fell into a trap. A trap to trapped a pro, uh, trapped a pro, pl- Plurbo? Pro- I tried to pull per- per- it, it got it got so it got so bad that Goldman had to pull him out of there kicking and screaming while he was crying, being like, I wanna still do this. And the Iron Warriors were just mowing his men down and they had to be okay with dying beside him because he was such an ego fucking maniac. Right, and your argument about Perturo, Perturabo like, saying that if, if he had been the one defending Terra, then it certainly wouldn't have broken in his simulations. But in that same book, they prove that the simulations are wrong and they don't actually work. And even he says that Dorn... In those, in those simulations, they prove that they could crack the Imperial Fists every single time, but when they flipped yeah, it, they could never... it was never, an impossible or, fight. They could never crack the Iron Warriors had they actually done it. And yeah, again, sure to your point, I agree with you. I will agree with you. The Imperial Fists never lose because they just do nothing and they take no part in the heresy whatsoever. They follow orders. And- that was the whole point. <laughs> Defending their home world. Okay, so. It's not their home world. <laughs> Listen, the problem here is that no matter it's what you say about world. Dorn, it, he's not as bad as it's Lionel Johnson bad. or no, Lorgar. No. He is not as bad as Lionel Johnson because when it comes to the Thank three you. worst Primarchs in order, it's the Lion, it's Corvus Corax, and then it's Rogel Dorn. Like how that's have, the. How do you not have? Wait, how do you not have Vulcan up there? Jesus Christ! Well, Vulcan at least. You know, Vulcan is the worst. Fought at the Vulcan gates the at the end there, but he was pretty fucking bad. Die. <laughs> Listen, Pro Pro Turbo, or pro, we call him Pro Turbo because Perturabo is a fucking stupid ass name. And no, 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 years no, no, ago. Pro- no, 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 no. Pro Pro Turbo was the was the yeah. knockoff name. Was yes. knockoff. Before. I was about to say. And then years ago, there was a company making knockoff Primarchs, and they couldn't call them by their names, and so they called the knockoff per- Perturabo Pro Turbo. And so oh, we yeah. always just refer to him as Pro Turbo now. Well, that's why I say Big Bobby G because yeah. there is no pronunciation of Roboot Gulliman that is correct. Yes. None. None now, whatsoever. Perturabo is a fucktard. That guy fails constantly all the time. And he is constantly tricked into terrible situations to the point where even his other traitor Primarchs don't respect him. Even Horus had to like stroke his ego and just be like, you know, you're my favorite, right? Like, you know. Yeah, but but at least least he's still better than Logar. Logar never got respected and then got disrespected multiple times. I mean, Logar Logar is the worst of the worst. He, he, he took everything that was given to him and made it bad. And then he basically was used as a pawn continually. And whether it's the writing or it's not the writing, he's just the worst. I love the way he looks. I think he has great style. And generally, I like the way he talks. And I think that he is an intelligent person. He just doesn't work as a Primarch because he doesn't do anything a Primarch is supposed to do. He's um, well. He's 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 the he's the jobber Primark. He's he's the one who's jobbed out in all the stories. And I know mm-hmm. and I know there has to be one of them. And it's just sad that it is Logar. But it it is so obviously written terribly. Like oh, even yeah. In, yeah. even no, even if Slade I, Slades of Darkness is the worst portrayal of him, where the whole book is just yep. trolling him and everybody just disrespects him. I, it's I, like insane. I had the, I had this conversation with with Terry earlier where I was saying like the best books in that series are written by authors who are able to craft situations and villains to be that reflection of the protagonist. The lazy writers were just like, duh, word bearers. And then the word bearers always had the stupidest fucking motivations in those books because they were the weakest writers that were, that had no ideas. So that's why they were just like, duh, the, the word bearers lose again. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like um, I love the word bears in 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 the battle for Kalth. Like I really like 
Like, yeah, because again, Dan Abnett is yeah. phenomenal. First, want- first, Her- first Heretic is one of the best. First Heretic yeah. is one of the best books. Yes, but 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 then, but then um but then Battle of the Abyss is one of the worst, and then Slaves of Darkness is right after it. It just is. It's very. Uh, it's very unknowing that the word bearers are both like the major players in those two books. It's it, it is what it is. Um, and, and Lionel Johnson is just terrible. terrible. Well, 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 for, well first <laughs> of all, the first, two, the first two Dark Angel books are terrible. That listen, let's, if, if, if you want, if you want to talk about Lionel Johnson, the one thing I like about him through the book series is they in the first two Dark Angel books, he's written so terribly. But that he, in the next he's two, better, they just he's written, completely he's better. carry that thread along, That's right. and they still make him a crying man baby who but, sulks and has violent outbursts and consorts with demons. But he, but he's, but he's still he's written consistently better and better throughout the entire books. Logar is just a punching bag the entire time. It's, yeah, it's unfortunate. It's All right, it, it's it's insane. <laughs> I feel like this also bled into our next point a it lot. Really especially- Listen, we're getting to this. This is why this is the fifth one. I was saying to to Maddie, I was like, I don't know if I want to throw this fifth question in there. And then I sort of went through them again. And I was like, yeah, I think this fifth question needs to happen because I think it's important for all of us to basically now take the gloves off and just start rattling. Uh, okay, so the last topic. Which Legion is the most embarrassing? Maddie. <laughs> It is your turn to defend the Dark Angels as not the most embarrassing. Um, I feel like the Dark Herculean Angels. Task. <laughs> well, no, uh, I, feel, I feel like there's a, I feel like there's a lot of like redeeming stuff in the books and in the fluff for why the Dark Angels aren't the most embarrassing. Um, I think one of the most interesting things that they do is that after Sanguinius gets pushed through like that, gal- like that fucking system wide like eight star thing, is that. Um, the lion has that like big like aha moment where he's gonna go and just nuke all like the traitor homeworlds, which I think is a cool like thing. One of the biggest things about the tr- about the betrayal of the dark angels, we haven't actually seen the end of it yet, so it's still up in the air about how it happens. I think there's a way to save about. I think there's gonna be an interesting way to see about how the betrayal of the legion happens, but right now, um. It's it's not embarrassing because they have been redeemed throughout the entire book series. There's a lot of interesting things that happens for the D- Dark Angels. Um, when you look at like just the just like kind of like just flipping through the stuff, there's a the only interesting things that like the the Imperial Fists do is they sit on Terra and they win one fleet battle. Again, that may be a writer's problem, but it's also just like they still have like a bunch of story to tell, and we're in the middle of like the final book series about maybe making them interesting, but they're really not right now. Mm. At least the Dark Angels have done stuff, and the Word Bears are so up and down. They have good peaks. Oh yeah, have, at least yeah. The the, the freaking Word Bears, like you said, with with the first Heretic and with fucking uh, Betrayal at Calth, they're they're these incredibly high, cool baller moments, and then you just have oh, and we're the punching bags, go us <laughs> moments as well. Okay. Uh, the Imperial Fists are not the most embar- uh, embarrassing Legion at all. I think that mm-hmm. you can't really say, you say they haven't done anything, but like the Pharos was fucking dope. They were absolutely fucking baller the entire time in the Pharos. Yeah, and all, the, all one of them there. Yeah, that the was, worst thing yeah. you can say, if the worst thing you can that say about Legion them re- <laughs> is that they do their jobs and that they they follow orders and that that's why they're embarrassing. Like that just doesn't make sense. That's no, not listen, an the, argument. No, the Imperial Nathan, Fist Nathan, are... Nathan! Duh! The thing with... Just, he can't help himself. The thing with the Imperial Fist is that they always fit the mold of what they are. And they have moments where they fall into a trap and it's fucked up. And like, that's the whole thing. And if we talk about whipping boys, we know the Imperial Fists tend to be whipping boys in terms of the fiction as well. If that's the argument that you guys are going to take well, with sometimes, well, let's talk about the Ultramarines movie where an entire legion of Imperial Fists can't well, do no. what a squad of Ultramarines can do. Well, like, well, this was, is the was, sort was, of thing that you uh, have to... Movie, uh, shut up! This is the sort of thing that you have Marines, to sort of... And yeah, they get picked off like a horror movie. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that you have to deal with when you are that chapter but that doesn't make you embarrassing it just makes you the 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 stock standard everyday marines these are the vanillaist marines out there 
That is their role. That's what they're supposed to be. They are the most militaristic. They follow orders. They are stern. They are disciplined. That's what they do. That's not embarrassing. That's just who they are. They are not the most embarrassing legion. And listen, they're still practicing safe social distancing from combat. They're just making sure that they stay at least hey, six I star we systems talk away. About pandemic anymore. <laughs> they're just right. staying staying six star systems away from anything <laughs> interesting happening. So how can you be embarrassing if you don't leave the house? Is that your argument for the word bearers? Because we're not at the point where we're I know. taking shots at each other yet. For fucking sake, <laughs> we are. We have never left the point where Listen, we are taking shots. This is at what each I said at the top leg. of the episode. This is why I can't provide <laughs> frameworks with you people. What what do you what do you mean by you people? <laughs> Listen, the more I drink, I know. Yeah. The all looser right. the tongue gets. So, Nathan, uh, defend the all word right. bearers. Word bearers. We've already talked about we have some fucking quality control issues here because they are the <laughs> jobber, right? Like you, when 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 you have a lazy writer or an inexperienced writer looking for an easy lazy villain, boom, fucking pencil in the word bearers give them a dumb motivation. And when it doesn't make sense, just be like, oh, but it's for a chaos sacrifice. That's shit. But let's talk about when the word bearers are at their fucking peak. You know, let's talk about them after Monarchia. When, you know, this is a broken legion whose soul is broken. And what happens? They pick themselves back up together. They find common cause. together. (laughs) <laughs> they find common cause, they discover the chaos gods, and then they set in plan a 40-year plan in order to get freaking Horus wounded with an athame so he can go have his, like, come-to-Jesus moment. Literally, but it's a chaos god. <laughs> you know, and at the same time, when you have fucking Kalth, like, one of the things that we have not touched on with Kalth is the fact that they flew into Kalth with Angron and the World Eaters and managed to keep Angron and the World Eaters on a short enough chain that they didn't just fuck it up and ruin everything for everyone. Because, and I feel like they just don't get enough mad respect for that because of the fact that, like, again, you know, World Eaters, Rage Chips, super fucking unpredictable, and yet they're able to Um, mask the presence of the World Eaters fleet from the Ultramarines in its entirety. I'm actually very surprised World Eaters wasn't one of the bottom three legions. Let's just talk about that for a second. Uh, They're pretty cool, man. (laughs) No, listen, anything that Aaron Dembski Bowden touches is fucking incredible because he is that good of an author. Because you notice, uh, Night Lords are one vote. Uh, fucking world leaders are one vote because these are ADB fucking books. And if the word bearers hadn't been nominated, the the fucking fifty book punching bag. Listen, everybody. Likes they would barbarians. also. Barbarians right? are cool, man, and that's just what the world leaders are. So the world leaders are always going to get that free pass because sure. they're fucking cool. They're rage monkeys, but but yeah. So like that's the thing is like again when you look at the fucking word Carnizo- bearers at Cal. They they were able to keep the world leaders on a tight enough chain to not blow it for everybody. They fucking snuck in the fucking Mechanicum scrap code that, you know, the fucking Legion of Accountants couldn't figure out what was going on just to drop the defense grid. And then, they, like I said, they just fucking brutally murdered hundreds of millions of civilians and fucking hundreds of thousands of ultramarines in a goddamned instant. Whoa. And the Ultramarines were able to claim, quote unquote, victory by not being wiped out to a man at that fucking battle. Listen, so like, when well, you look well, at- Cor- well, Corfor- Corferon really dropped okay, the gloves ball. gloves are off. Man. Let's do it. Cor- Corfor- <laughs> Corferon really, at the end of that battle, Corferon really dropped the ball. Like he, like he fucked that up. But again, that's, that's mm-hmm. right. Because he, again, like what well, I said, like maybe five. Well, yeah, when, again, he, when turns Cor- it, he turns into Emperor Palpatine. He Palpatine's- could have killed fucking big bobby g beheaded the goddamn ultramarines he's like no i'm gonna corrupt him uh, and, he and him. you're yeah. right he totally pulls a fucking rise of skywalker emperor palpatine and he just uh here's the thing why? when it comes to which one is the most embarrassing you know like <laughs> matt had an entire like list of the embarrassing things that happen I think the thing with the word bearers is that they are embarrassing. They're an embarrassment not only to the Imperium, <laughs> that they they are also an embarrassment to the traitor legions. To the yeah. point where even the traitor legions are like, oh god, the All fucking right. word bearers. No, are no, here. no, listen. Listen, okay. no, fuck you. Listen, this is what it comes down to is that they are an embarrassment. They're stupid, they're hyper-religious Mm-mm. in like the weirdest ways. Like, if you want to talk about like 
Yeah, but you're right from Arizona, so like you're comfortable. I'm surprised you don't feel at home reading word bearers with their weird religious nature. I'm a religious um, person. Yes, that's true, and I find them awkward no, no, no. and embarrassing. I'm not saying because you're religious. I'm just saying, you know, you grew up in Arizona. And, you know. <laughs> Listen, this is what I'm saying. Even growing up okay. in a red state in a Christian right. family as a Christian, that shit's fucking embarrassing. What? Listen, they are the, the worst most of the worst embarrassing hillbilly redneck religion. Christians. The most embarrassing legion, and again, it can't be the Imperial Fists because you can't be embarrassed if you're social distancing from the plot, is the fucking Dark Angels. And the reason it's the Dark Angels is it just has to go back to the fact that half their fucking legion turns traitor. So you've got a fucking pouty-ass Primarch who consorts with demons and half of his grounded children allegedly, decide... Allegedly. 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 <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> what, like the ostrich? Not the demon yet. <laughs> like like the ostrich allegedly um no but like here's the thing how many word bearers were killed on fucking istvan 3 zero mm -hmm. why because they were all on board they are all believers 100%. there was not a fucking uh, purge also, also of because, word also because, bearers also, also because ferris manis was a terrible military planner <laughs> No, 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 remember, Isvan 3 was when was all of the uh, the traitor legions dumped down all of the guys that wouldn't turn traitor to mm -hmm. kill that them. Wasn't, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the word bears. The word bears weren't there on Isvan 3. That was, the, that, was the no, but, that was the Emperor's children. No, I know, but that's no. what I'm saying. He's saying the word bearers had on board. zero Marines that were not on board. But they, but they were but the they were, Dark they Angels. Even, they weren't even at Isvan 3, Nathan. They weren't at Isvan 3. That okay, wasn't fine. an Isvan 3 thing. I get that they weren't at Istvan 3, but they still had zero Marines who weren't on board. How no. many Dark Angels? No, Nathan, no, no. They How weren't many there. Dark Angels? Nathan, 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 they had they had a brotherhood of people who went through the Legion during the Shadow Crusade and mm -hmm. slaughtering people who they felt were too sympathetic to the Emperor. I was going to make they that point, too. They had people going yes. and murdering their own men. They, they did, like, a pre-purge. It wasn't just that they were all on board. I was going to come back <laughs> with this, too. It was actually like, no, no, no. They they were just ahead of the curve when it came yeah, to... They, like, they, they, they had they their a, own... They did, they, did a, they did an internal purge. They had, yeah. like, a, they, had, they, had the, they had the chaplains literally leave a brotherhood around it, and they would, like put squads into like random things where like, oh, yeah. they mysteriously got killed or like, yeah. would, like oh, like this bad thing. Or like, there was, an like there was a drop sure site accident. out ahead of time. Yeah. But I will agree with you that the Dark Angels are easily the most embarrassed. Like the, the, um, the word bearers are written to be the most embarrassing and they do See, the most embarrassing things the, and they are embarrassing to both sides. But the Dark Angels are like inadvertently embarrassing. Yeah, because the Dark <laughs> Angels, like the Raven Guard, are only ever written as protagonists and they still come off as yeah. like fucking incompetent right. douchebags. And exactly. like that's that's the problem. Like, you know, <laughs> they said with the Raven Guard, whose best whose novel is like a fucking Alpha Legion recruitment video. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> See, and, and that's and the that's, thing with the Dark Angels. That's the thing with that's the thing with the Dark Angels is that they're all fucking terrible. They're all terrible people. Every single person who's a Dark Angel is a horrible, horrible person. It's not that they were corrupted by a dark god. It's not that they were doing anything. This is the Legion that found out that the Imperium existed, found out that there are unnumbered threats in the galaxy waiting to wipe humanity out. And they know for a fact that the only way that they survive in this galaxy is to join the Imperium and fight or join chaos. And they decide, nope, we're just going to keep our, we're just going to have our own planet. You know, we're just going to, we're just, you know what? We're not part of the Imperium anymore. Fuck you. We like our world the way that it was. Let's go back to slavery in the caste system. That were, that was what they said. They were like, we, we, you know, we can't have these commoners. We can't have these peasants having ideas anymore. We need to go back to a system where that was, our that nightly was, orders all, are on first top. First of all, that was first of all that was Luther, and Luther was corrupted by chaos. That wasn't the lion. That's why that's why only some of them turned in. It wasn't the half the legion. It was it's only it was only the recruits coming out of Calvin. It's embarrassing. It's happening, Which Matt. because the Luther had been given the instructions to grow the legion ended up being like half the legion yes so <laughs> they grew a traitor legion yes and because all because allegedly Big Bad right Sky daddy was who was allegedly consorting with demons grounded them to caliban and no, was never no, coming no, 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 he no, grounded no. them to the planet then told them he was just gonna run to the store for a pack of cigarettes <laughs> and he <laughs> never came back he, 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 
He grounded, Lu- he grounded yeah. Luther. He grounded Luther because Luther let a nuclear bomb onto a battle barge. I mean, he that grounded just... Luther because Luther let, let a nuclear bomb onto the battle barge to almost kill the lion. That's Luther embarrassing. To Luther's in, Luther's incompetent. He's that's an embarrassment. Not, that's all Thank lion you. problem. So that's an embarrassing point. dark angel. That's a great point. That's man. great. He was one of the higher ups too. That's pretty bad. Yeah, he was like a chapter master, wasn't he? Yeah, you, he want, you want you want you want to talk about you want to talk about incompetent higher ups? Logar let chaos infested oh, fucking daddy be part of his chapter. legion. <laughs> Logar let 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 chaos infested daddy and chaos infested Erebus go run amok and then manipulate him into doing things. The lion wasn't manipulated by Logar. He just sent him off. He didn't think that he was chaos. I- I really like that there's he only was, two horses in this Logar, fight right now. Well, because Logar was, again, you can't be embarrassing if you haven't nope. done shit. And nope. this is where the Imperial Fists, like, the problem with the Fists is, like, you are literally the fucking middle child for everything. Yeah. Our fucking Horus Heresy Legions game is releasing all but two Legions. Fists aren't one of them. That's right. You know, 50 five books of the Horus Heresy series Mm. and you got one of them where you were undressed by fucking five alpha legionaries for like 350 pages and then you lop the head off of one dude listen and just like this is a win column like how could it be embarrassing if you weren't even written in and invited to the party I'm not saying it was a win I'm saying ultimately they failed and their mission was something else but trying to use the alpha legion as the argument for why they're bad the alpha legion embarrass everybody Oh, they're I know. that the good. It doesn't matter. Legion. Let's, let's just listen. Throw it that just down doesn't on the table. matter. The Alpha Legion embarrass but everybody. But they embarrass Horus. The, the, the Alpha Legion is clearly a favorite. The Alpha Legion is clearly the favorite Legion of like the Black Library of writers because they get all the coolest shit. Dude, they're oh, they dope get as all the hell. Dude. All right, so let's... like that's oh, not even I, an embarrassment. That's no. just yeah, and, that happens sometimes. And I get it because it totally happens but that's my point the Every- person with embarrassing facebook photos the next morning wasn't the guy who chose to stay home and not go to the party that's right. and that's where you're at so the imperial fists aren't the most embarrassing legion because in 55 books you're you're barely there yeah you're like the emperor you're barely even in the fucking thing. Well, hey, hey, the, hey, the, <laughs> hey, at least the book about the Emperor is way more interesting than anything the Imperial Fists have ever done. I really liked a lot of, I mean, don't get me wrong. That one book was pretty fucking dope. Okay, <laughs> listen, and, 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 and here's what it comes Master down of, to. Ma- Master of Mankind is the best book. It is the best book. Here's what it comes down to, all right? Lorgar is an embarrassment, and his <laughs> legion is an embarrassment to everybody. And I think that if I had to pick between the two, I can't pick Lorgar and the word bearers because they still at least have a role to play and they have some cool aspects to them that kind of make you go like, yeah, they're kind of embarrassing, but boy, they're really going for it. You know, they're like Jared Leto's Joker. It's not good, <laughs> but fuck me, did he ever go for it? Okay, so you got to give him credit for that. L- that's where Logar is that, very Logar is very method. Like yeah, he's a very method person. Exactly. <laughs> that is where the word bearers land. But when it comes to the dark angels, they're just embarrassing because yeah. they they are the guys who are trying to be cool, wearing clothes from the Matrix in 2020. It just so, doesn't work anymore. Their bathrobes are embarrassing. Here is the thing for me why I think the Dark Angels are absolutely the worst and why the Black Library just fumbled them like crazy. Um, When, before the Horus Heresy kicked off, when we were still fucking working up Kingsway, we'd be having the talks. Dark Angels were always kind of interesting because there was always the question of what happened? Why did part of this Legion turn to chaos? And are the ones that are around now trying to suppress the secret that they have them turn to chaos. Like, is this the half that stayed loyal or not? And is that the secret? And there was always that question and it made them super fucking interesting. But then we've had four books that said the reason half this Legion turned to chaos is because daddy got angry, grounded them Mm-hmm. And then went to the store for a pack of cigarettes and never came back. And they decided to burn the house down. And that is literally taking what was a core mystery of the game, like Warhammer 40,000 fluff. And one of the most interesting elements of it and making it shit. 
Like they literally so, took so, something okay, that was so, super so you're, cool so you're, so you're and made it fucking embarrassing. So you're compl- so you're complaining about the Dark Angels being shitty because they George Lucas their story. Like what do you? Who yes. cares, man? <laughs> I was trying to avoid the whole like fiction argument of all this because we've actually kind of shit on a lot of like authors throughout this argument, which was not my intention at all. Really, I think. If we just focus on the story and we don't use the out of saying they're written this way, it what it what it boils down to is they're supposed to be cool, but they're not. And that's fucking embarrassing. I think that if you look at the word bears, they're written, they're supposed to be embarrassing, everybody looks at them as being embarrassing, but at least they're doing sort of what they're meant to be doing. And I think when it comes to the dark angels, so, so they the, just so don't they're, fit so they're the, the most embarrassing then. That's it. Yes. So they're the most embarrassing then. In fluff, they're the most embarrassing. Because all Logar does is job and get fucking manipulated all the time. Yeah. And the word bears, all they do is just job. But it, but it, but this conversation is not just a fluff conversation. Because if it was just a fluff conversation, then yes, the word bears would be the most embarrassing because I mean, it's they're pretty undeniable. Fucking embarrassing uh, is the thing because it, it, it's undeniable and <laughs> feel so, like. And, and do you Nathan, feel like kicking Nathan, a trash Nathan, can when you say it, Link? Nathan, <laughs> Nathan, I'm embarrassing. telling you. Nathan, I'm telling you, read the last half of slaves of darkness it's and it will gonna happen, friendo. about how fucking horrendous Listen, y'all you already told me it's the second worst book second only to fucking um abyss. battle of the abyss battle of the you know, battle for the abyss so uh yeah that's gonna be a no when i was when, when i was when I, nathan when i was reading it i would go through chapters and i would message lang and i would laugh mm-hmm. i would i was just laughing about i was like you won't believe what just happened next he's like i'm like i'm not telling you but just and then Nathan and then Lang like listened to it and he was like he missed me and he's just like wow yeah it, it was just, it was just bad. wow it was it was it is one of the most craziest writing listen in, in my mind it's a toss up between the two there's only two horses in this race I'm actually pretty happy about that right now but here's the thing it, to me it's a toss up if I had to pick one it would be the Dark Angels just because. They're not supposed to be embarrassing, but somehow they've made it embarrassing, and that's yeah. sort of what hurts them I, the and, most. And, and, and I and I would argue, I would argue, there's a lot more things that they've done as writers, and the story of oh, yeah. and the they've story of cool line, shit. And, and, and and this and the story of I would say the story of the lion is a lot more interesting than the story of Logar, just because <laughs> there's at least just be, just because nope. there's there's at least some things that the lion has done that is like redeemable and not redeemable, but at least he's like a person. Who's like tormented? Where Logar is just a joke. I he, mean, like, listen, entirely you, he's a joke. He's a joke. Talking Everything's about good. the lion as not a stupid Primarch. You were just like, no, and never, he I was the said, only Nathan, person Nathan, that Nathan, managed Nathan. to know what Conrad Kurz was saying. And I'm like, yes, because Conrad Kurz was speaking the truth to them. He was and saying these words three, out loud. Yeah. He was <laughs> saying words out loud, and these three fucking idiots weren't listening and didn't know that when he's like, ah, this is what's gonna happen. And it took a fucking demigod with a supposedly heightened intellect hours to figure it out. And I'm just like, dude, this is fucking embarrassing. (laughs) I think think Matt might have passed out in a rage. Uh (laughs) (laughs) I can, like, hear his veins pulsating. I'm like, listen... I can't defend all of the ways the word bearers have been used poorly because honestly, when you look through like 55 books, it's them or it's like shards of Magnus as the cool. fucking no. villain. No, 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 for no, like no, 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 45 no, 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 no. of the, the Raven. No, no, Nathan, the Raven guard are, have been, have the Raven guard have been hit. Probably one of the worst. Legions oh yeah. The no, listen, Raven guard I, and the Raven guard and the salamanders. Have took it as hard yeah. as the word I for, believe it's, they're, that the, they're if, terrible. If we they're could terrible. expand this to what is the most embarrassing legion, it is absolutely unequivocally the Raven Guard. But Lang told yes. me the rules after the fact. Right. I'm just um, I'm just surprised. I'm just surprised more people didn't vote Raven Guard or World Eaters. That's that. That's my thing. My, like, my the Raven bottom, Guard. My bottom three were Salamanders, Iron Hands, and Raven Guard. And my bottom three are Dark Angels, Imperial Fists, and Raven Guard. <laughs> like, and, 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 and and my bottom three are Raven Guard, um, Salamanders, and World Eaters. <laughs> no, all right, no, I'm no, not no, putting no, Raven Guard no, 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 on the list no, 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 because iron, this is iron, not iron, our. Iron hands. <laughs> no, no, uh, Iron Warriors. Iron Warriors. Sorry, Iron Warriors, Salamanders. I'm drunk. <laughs> iron Warriors. <laughs> all right, Salamanders. Man, yeah, we get it. For, for Turbo's Legion, Vulcan, and Korax. Those three legions. Those three guys. 
Listen, Those are the worst. The most embarrassing thing that ever happened was the thing that put the Iron Hands at the bottom for me, and that was the Iron Father's uh, cult building a, a patchwork he, copy he, of their the Primarch thing, and worshiping about, it. Like, because, like, yes, the word bearers are the fucking villain punching bag, but I always felt like every time the Black Library needed a filler book. When, mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is just something that wasn't progressing the plot, but, hey, this is a fucking multi-billion dollar series, so we need to you mean, release you mean the most you mean You mean the most profitable thing Games Workshop has ever done? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and so, good God, the Iron Hands... Oh, boy, did they suffer because the Iron Hands, um, I, I just, I need to say this because I've been defending a legion that I don't strongly care for. (laughs) (laughs) The Iron Hands, initially, when you look at like the first three books and you look at the setup, this was an interesting legion that had flaws because they basically had the equivalent of like anorexia. But with like body modification. So there are, you know, the whole flesh is weak and like we're going to put in cybernetics was like this weird fucked up pathos. And then Ferris Manus dies. And then every time they needed a, a shitty book that was going to do nothing to advance the story, we got a story about like an iron hand that was just this fucking abusive wife beater. <laughs> who was just like who was angry and yelled and didn't trust other legions and would fucking fire on other loyalists and you're just like what the fuck happened here like oh my god iron hands had some of the worst fucking writing like it the, like the, for me it's the iron warriors and the iron warriors are one of the most blandest paint by numbers worst legions ever the only positive of plurbo he, 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 he which he is has, why i love them he and, and he got he got one moment. He beat anger on. He outsmarted him, and he was like, "I'm gonna fucking beat you with the, my bodyguard, and you're gonna come with me to Ulanar now." And but everything else about them, every time they show up, is just like, and the Iron Warriors show up, and it's like, and they're lame, or they die, or Petrobo gets fucking get, get, gets gets abused once again, and he's angry, and then gets told he's not good enough, or it's it's just it's constantly just blah about them it's not interesting he's a jobber he is the most embarrassing worst written legion ever it, at least now the, I, at, again at least, iron, iron at least, hand at and least, raven guard can take the worst writing well, because the, the, oh the raven guard are Cor. how does korax get the keys to the castle and then get out and then literally make um new marines Ten thousand years beforehand, and he and then like it fucks up once, and he's like, "And we fucked up." And I don't we, understand why we fucked up. We made chaos mutants, but that's cool. Yeah. Welcome to the family, <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, the Raven Guard are the Raven Guard are pfft, there. Raven Guard and Iron Warriors are just the blah, thing with the Salamanders. They are something else. I'm gonna jump in here. I've let you guys go for a bit. The thing with the Salamanders is that they are the worst parts of Lord of the Rings. Like, that's all of their books is just they're going someplace. They're not really <laughs> ever doing anything. They're just sort of and, like, we need to get back home. Oh, we oh, need to Lang, get Lang, back Lang. to our Primark. What's the catchphrase? Oh, I don't remember. Vulcan lives. Oh, Vulcan lives. Vulcan oh, lives. God, God every damn page, it. Every page of every book. For the salamanders the, is the Vulcan and, and, and Vulcans on and Vulcans on Terra now and Vulcans yeah. on Terra, which makes no fucking sense. Well, it does if you read the salamanders books well, because he, well, he goes I, well, I know some portals. I, I know I know why it makes sense in the books, but in the it, and then that being something subvertive about what they expect, it's like okay, no, no, no. I so actually I actually true. read an interview about this. Um, the salamanders as a legion and Vulcan in particular, um gave the black library a headache because most of the books, or at least their, their loose plot points go back to the Horace heresy collected visions artwork that was all written. And in that there is artwork for Istvan five, where you see fucking Vulcan smashing fools with a hammer, but there's also artwork of the siege of Terra that had Vulcan smashing fools with a hammer. So they had to figure out how the fuck this legion 
that get so smashed on Istvan that they never have a subsequent founding. Like there are no successor chapters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did they get so fucked up and get Vulcan from point A to point B? And they legitimately said that there, there were hundreds of hours of meetings just trying to figure out how the fuck they can make this work because they're like 40 year old art reference point. Have you, uh, uh, Nathan, 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 have you, Nathan, have you read the two siege of terrors books so far? No, I read so many fucking books so quickly. Um, as you know, like I, I basically average about a book every five or so days. Um, so, I'm waiting until they're like six, like when seven, comes out then i'm gonna pick them all up and just try to read them because so, i know there's only eight so so in in siege of terra in the second book there's like a one well don't spoil it snippet th th there's th there's a one snippet of line that says sanguinius and sanguinius and rogue aldorn and jacotti connor are like at a war council and they're there with valdor um the the head the head praetorian the head custodian and they're like, well, what are we going to do with only three Primarchs in the world? And Valdor's like, what do you mean three? And they're like, what? And they're like, and, and there's like, no, there's four. And then he like, ex and then like, he has like a little snippet about how Vulcan is now defending like the warp gate that is, that was like opened up by Magnus. Mm -hmm. And he's the only person there defending it. And that's like, th and that's all it is. And that's how, but they had to make like literally Vulcan jump through the warp. A yes. bunch of times in all the books to get to that point, and it's, well, it's, it's and the they, they, they had to make him a perpetual, right? Yes. Yeah. Because how do you get super fucked? Like as the person who would literally only get on the last ship, how do you get off Istvan Five? And no, no, no. So like I said, I I totally understand with like the Vulcan time hoppy thing, and all of his books were literally just serving to bridge the. But this artwork has him on Istvan, and this artwork has him on Terra. What the fuck? And that, like that was literally like all, every Salamander's right. book was just trying to explain it. Yes, and that's the problem is it's always just them going somewhere, and that's why it's boring and it's stupid. And there's no character, there's no personality in their legion. Um, I, I, you couldn't pay me to remember the name of any Salamander character, which is very frustrating. But like when it comes down to um, this argument, because we've really gone off, we're going to go around <laughs> and do our closing arguments for our chapter. Nathan, Matt, while other people are talking, just mute your mic, okay? <laughs> and just let people have their closing arguments, and then we will have one last fuckfest of shit talking, okay? Okay, okay. so closing arguments. Uh, if we're going around in the circle, I think. It's your turn. Is, who's is it? It's yours it's because okay. this would be number six. Okay, so <clears throat> closing arguments. The Imperial Fists are not the worst chapter. And there are a lot of reasons for this. And the biggest reason is that at no point have I tried to argue that they're the best chapter. They're just not the worst. They are vanilla <laughs> Marines. They have bright, colorful heraldry. Their Primarch is such a badass. He fights with a chainsword. And yeah... They are stern, they are militaristic, and they are everything that they're supposed to be. They fit the mold. They're absolutely not the worst. If anything, they are vanilla. They are the most vanilla flavor. It's not anyone's favorite flavor, but it's certainly not the worst flavor. It tastes good in virtually everything. That is the Imperial Fists. I would have gone with lemon. Same arguments, but at least the lemon, you got the color match. Yeah, but it's, it's, some people don't like lemon. Um, okay, so Nathan. So people don't like closing, vanilla. Closing arguments, Nathan. All right. Word bearers. Without the word bearers, fucking 55 novels, a whole other series, just don't exist. And this is why the word bearers are fucking cool. They have, you know, like I said, this, this interesting fucking look, um, you know, which, you know, just not just their armor, but like, you know, visually striking on the tabletop because you have fucking big hulking gal Vorback. You have banners to the chaos gods. You have fucking demons and hordes of cultists and, you know, your typical Marines and all of those gubbins, whether it be their vehicles, their Terminators. So even if we're just going to talk about from a visual aesthetic, the word bearers are fucking dope as shit. Um, 
And that's not even getting into the fact that, like I said, without them, the horse heresy doesn't exist. The fucking siege of terror doesn't exist. Fucking so many arguments between Lang and I and kicking out over books just Uh could not have ever happened without the word bearers. So are they the worst Legion? Absolutely not. Yeah, they do suffer from being like the fucking villain of the week for like 30 of the fucking books. And that, that kind of hurts them and it can definitely get it on your nerves, but worst Legion, not by a fucking mile. Matt, we just went off on Raven guard. Like, yeah. really. <laughs> Matt, yeah. Raven guard um, aren't one of the options though, Matt. Um, I, th- I think, I think the reason why the dark angels aren't the worst Legion is because, like I stated before, um, the lion came from a very bad place of writing. Um, th- they were he was one of the worst characters. Over time, over the last ten years, we've really seemed to see about why the Dark Angels are very interesting. Um, and like I said before, their story hasn't been fully finished yet. Um, I like the idea that the that that the lion is very like prickly as a person. And he has to pay for his sins, but I feel like the payoff for his arc as like a character is going to be very interesting. And his arc as a character really like um, shows what the Dark Angels Legion goes through. Um, they grow. He finds himself. Um, he's written better. He goes from like he goes from like a static weirdo to like being like very like relatable and very interesting. Um, there's there's a, there's a lot of characters in his there's a lot of characters in his like circle by the end of the by the end of like the books that we're at right now like Redland, um, the the Death Wing the like Devastator Wing person he's very interesting and they always p- seem to play like a very interesting part in the history of the Imperium like even in the new Indominus Crusade like um, the, the Cipher character shows up and helps Gulliman and I really want to see where that pays off. So I think there's more to be said about th- there's more to be said about the Dark Angels, and they're not just there's clearly something happening with them that's interesting. Yes, there's some of them that are traitors. Yes, there's some of them that are loyalists. Yes, the lion is a complete dick and he has daddy issues. But there's also <laughs> there's, there's 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 also ter- and that's it, but that, his that's closing arguments are just now like chopping his legs out from. Under- oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. he's, he's no, 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 all right. No, no. I, hey, I understand. I understand that, but that's why I find them. But that's why I find them interesting. Okay. Because there, 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 there's stuff that's happening with them that make their story something so, that you can, something that you can like really take investment in. Where like I don't see anything the Raven Guard do that you can take investment. In. <laughs> right. Okay. Listen, I want to pu- I want to push pause on us us chipping at each other because I have a I have a legitimate question for you, Matt. Yeah. You say that their story is not done. Is it ever going to be told? Like, do the Siege of Terra books jump from not Terra no. to go other well, places? My, my my theory my theory about this is is that they is. the right. So this is gonna this we're gonna play some inside baseball on this. <laughs> is no no no. But like when you when it comes to fandom, like there's they 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 clearly make hints about what's going on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's going to be more Horus Heresy novels, or there's going to be more Novelias after the Siege of Terra. Well, yeah. So, and and, and, I, and I think I think one of the major ones that they will. I think I think one of the major ones is going to be what happens when um, Lionel Johnson shows up at um, at Caliban. And, and, then, and, and then nukes the planet. No, and yeah. and, that, and that's definitely a possibility. Like that—that that was just my question because you've mentioned it's not wrapped up. I know we're doing an eight-book siege, and then I also know, and this is going all the way back to the freaking Black Library Expo that we hosted. Yeah. Uh, with Gemma, God bless her. She's good people. Um, you know where they were talking about how after the Siege of Terra, there were plans to write novels set in sort of that re- Reformation period afterwards mm-hmm. that would culminate with Gwilliman releasing the Codex Astartes yeah. and the splitting and of a bunch regions. of Yeah, a bunch of Primarchs now getting lost, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. because there, there are ends to tie up. We know the Siege of Terra yeah. is going to end with the death of Horus and the striking down of the Emperor. Because this is where the Siege of Terror uh, ends. 
but there's a whole lot more that happens afterwards. So, I, okay, I'm I'm hoping we get conclusion because right no. now, good God, is it no, hard? Dark, to Dark angels are going to be like lost. It'll end, but it it's just you're not going to get any answers. <laughs> You know, oh, like the Sky, they're the rise of Skywalker. Yeah, no, like it's no, just... I, no, I, I have, I have faith in the dark. I, I have faith in the dark library oh, writers that there's, library. there's, cl there's clearly been plans in the last we few books. Where, 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 where they've, where they've made Lionel Johnson more interesting, and I, and I can't wait to see how the Battle of Caliban happens because I feel like that's going to be an interesting book. <laughs> I, I, again, I just the, this is part of why I think the Dark Angels really fall flat for me very often is because I just don't ever see, see it happening. You know, there was the Angels of Darkness book that uh, Gav Thorpe wrote, which was quite good. And uh, I don't think it's canon anymore. Um, no, it is. No, Angels of Darkness is canon. I mean, well, then, the there you go. Canon. That just shits on your Primark even further. But, well, you know, like that well, whole... Because yeah, remember, the Angels of Darkness was the Dark Angels book that came out before the Horus Heresy yes. existed. And the whole idea of it was... Because it was well, the interrogation of one of the the lost. Yeah. Yes. And the whole premise was the lost and those that are being hunted remain true to the emperor with Luther. And it was yeah. fucking the lion that flipped to Team Chaos. That's right. Well, and, and, and then that, only and that, because they couldn't get to Terra in time, when they did arrive, they're just like, "Oh, guys, we're here well, to help." And, and, you. And, and that's and, and that's and that's why I'm saying that's why it's going to be interesting about what happens. Though. That's why I'm saying they're interesting. The the reason why I don't think it's canon is because that is clearly not how Luther and the existing people on Caliban right yep. now are being written. I think that it's sort of its own story and it's all, all on its own, but. The Dark Angels, yeah, they're they're the they're the worst thing about Lost. We're never going to get answers, and even if we do, they're not going to be good answers. It's just going to further embarrass that chapter. When it comes to the Word Bearers, I don't think there's any redeeming them. I don't think there's any way they get cooler, and I don't think there's anything that you can do or any book that you can write that would actually make them better than what they are right now. There are good points for both of these legions, but I don't see any of them getting better. Whereas for the Imperial this, Fist, the only way to go is up, baby. Because when you're in the in middle, this, that's in, in, the in direction this, in, you go. At the at the end of this at the end of this episode, when we put up the poll about who the worst of the legion is, can we put a fourth? Can we put a fourth no. um, oh, option Raven as Guard? Raven Guard? No, no, we cannot put a fourth option as Raven Guard. because <laughs> we've all argued why they're the worst. Right, we are not everything we, and the end again, all we're be not all. Gonna everyone have, voted. We're not going to have the poll. So everybody, I just want you to go ahead, vote for which of the three you think is the absolute worst, but, you know, feel free to write in Ravengard. No, you are not. <laughs> Do not put that in people's heads. Can we, Facebook can, polls can, can, are so hard to, like, it's such a pain <laughs> in the ass to, like, don't do that. Don't listen to Nathan. Don't be, hey, don't be like Nathan. Hey, so, hey, so, so going on this, speaking of heresy, um, if, if I know I requested this to you, Lang. What? Can we do a model of the week on Sanguinius? No, not right now. Okay. Oh, but please. Next please. Week, listen, I, please. I, I promise you, Matt, when we do it, we will do it and you will be here. Okay? But we're 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 almost at two hours, so we're going to call it there. I, I I don't think any of us can handle getting more drunk on a weekday. I do I still have to say, work from home. I <laughs> have a new project kickoff tomorrow. Yes, I was going to. And I think it's what? <laughs> it's after midnight for you now? It sure is. Yes. So here's the thing. Okay? I'm just going to very quickly... Lay this out. I'm going to put a poll up for all five of the questions, and that is how we are going to decide who is the worst, okay? Um, mm. And if it comes down to two legions, then we will have a final vote between those two legions, okay? That's how we are going to decide. Um, or, I don't know, we'll count votes or something like that. But essentially, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put all five questions out. These are going to be who has the worst this, who has the worst this. And then that's what everyone is going to get to vote on. And that is how we were going to find the worst chapter. Um, I don't suspect there will be a tie, but we'll see what happens. But that's what it's going to be. And, uh, yeah, I I'm very interested to see how this shakes out. I'm <laughs> feeling pretty good about it right now from an Imperial Fist standpoint, but... That might I be... mean, you're you're in third place right now. <laughs> I think that's mostly just because you guys both feel very strongly about each other's legions, <laughs> and I and oh, I'm yeah. sort of 
leaning oh, yeah. back on I the have, ropes. I, I, I have a, when you when you told me we were doing this, I was like, oh, trust me, I got word bearers information. Like <laughs> I'm ready for this. Lang has been hearing me bitch about the word bearers yep. for years. Yes, for years. <laughs> that I, said, I've been defending the Imperial Fists for years. This is not it, something. Every time I tell people my favorite Legion is the Imperial Fist, they look at me like I'm fucking crazy. I'm like, nah, man, they're the fucking best. See, Ugh. for like for for me, I. I was always just indifferent to them, but then again, I really enjoyed Angel Exterminatus, mm-hmm. and and so it swung me into the Iron Warriors camp, and and that you know, and also fuck the Angel, Emperor is Angel, also Angel, is Angel also Exterminatus is one of the best it. books too. Angel Exterminatus it's, is one of the best books. It's it book. is exceptional. So yeah. I mean, like, like that was the thing is like whenever people say like you know that fine but like i said it's just like whenever people are just like my favorite's raven guard that's when you kind of look at them and just be like yeah really <laughs> really korax really Cor- Cor- really <laughs> korax is your favorite i was always First very all... indifferent uh toward the raven guard up until the horus heresy books and then that just tanked them for me and it was the same thing with the iron warriors actually kind of are not iron, what, warriors, what, iron what, hands. no no but no but no but no but let's let's be real about it the the salamanders have been done the dirtiest in the in the yeah, horse they, were, they were pretty cool right up until these books came I, out. I feel uh, I, I feel like John is <laughs> yeah. He's got an uphill battle about convincing Old John me Wong, about my... uh, his, his salamanders. He loves those salamanders. That's this is a tough time to be a salamanders fan. But you never know. You know something good could come out of it. Um, but yeah, so that has been the battle for the worst, and that has been Jaded Gamer Cast for this week. My name is Lang. I'm Nathan, and I'm Maddie. Have a good one. Cheers. Peace.